Hello, uh, delighted to say I have Shane Cooney and uh, Sarah Healy with me here live. If anyone wants to get any questions in, please do, and I'll only pick the nice ones, of course, but uh, they're here on behalf of Littlewoods Ireland, who are proud to support their camogie <coughs> and hurling for a fifth year running as part of their Style Meat Substance campaign. Uh, Shane and Sarah, how are you both doing? Good, Jen. Good stuff. You're both uh, St. Thomas's uh, club people. I'll start off with you, Shane, as well. How important is the club for you uh, and uh, and your development? And then obviously, Sarah, if you can kind of take it up after Shane has responded. Yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, I guess it's been it's been massive for me. You know, it kind of gives you that platform to succeed with you know people that you would have grown up with over the years. So it's fantastic. And I guess we've been very lucky as a club to have had some sec some success over the past couple of years. So like that then as well, it kind of puts you in a position to represent your county as well. So I've been lucky to, to feed off that as well. And Sarah, from your point of view? Yeah, the same, you know, the club is where you start. You know, every county player is a club player first and foremost. You know, you start when you're about five or six and you play with them probably after, you know, you finish up with the county. So, yeah, the club is everything, you know, you got to, it's the real backbone behind all the county players. Yeah, absolutely. And assuming that both of your count or both of your county teams can, uh, oh, sorry, both of your county teams are in league finals, and that's assuming that Galway meets uh, Kilkenny later on in the championship. We won't obviously jump that far ahead just yet. But Shane, you've you've had a very good league. I mean, even the last couple of games, I was speaking with Joe Canning earlier this week about the big turnarounds that you've had in games. You were well behind Waterford, but you turned it around brilliantly, and the same against Cork as well. Like, what do you put that down to? Is it down to quality, great bench, great fitness, just the quality you have anyway? Yeah, it's a combination of all those factors, I guess. You know, there's there's a lot of leaders in the team there with massive talent. And, you know, when you look at the setup that we have in place, both physically, I guess, technically, tactically, and I guess mentally, you know, we're in a very good position. And, you know, in the league, I guess we put some emphasis on, you know, trialing new players as well. So that kind of benefits us from having depth in the panel going into championship, but it also, I guess, brings a lot of competition for places as well, which is a motiva motivating factor for every person there. Yeah, and it's year two for Shane O'Neill. Like, both of his seasons have been interrupted, obviously, due to the pandemic. Do you think this second season now he's got his feet under the table more, knows the players that bit better and can help you kick on? Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, Shane was we're just kind of getting into the swing things last year when COVID kind of hit, but I think even regardless of the circumstances last year, you know, the backroom team has done a great job. Shane has a great team in place there. So I think this year now we're really beginning to get some momentum. Um, so like that, hopefully we can see the benefits of it in that uh, championship. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, just from your own point of view, you've a, a league final in the Camogie to look forward to in, in, uh, in Croke Park, just coming down the tracks very soon and going to be a bit of a crowd in there as well. After that win over Kilkenny the other day, do you feel you're in good form now? And, you know, obviously I'm sure you'll be looking to reclaim your All-Ireland title down the line. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, the win against Cork was probably, was a, was a really tough match. You know, we had to go to extra time to get through it. But, you know, we are looking forward to Sunday, you know. We sort of the few bits and bobs to work on, but we're just looking forward to it. And, you know, championship isn't that far away, you know. So it is kind of a stepping stone towards that, but yes, there is still silverware on the line, so we will be looking to go out and try win that. And what do you think got you across the line against Cork the other day? Um, I think it was just our work rate and our fitness, you know, the fact that we were able to stay going for the extra time. Um, I think that really got us over the line. You know, we talked a lot about up on our work rate from the previous league matches, and I think we did that, and I think that was probably... The, what got us over the line. Yeah, Shane, just jumping back to yourself, there's um, plenty of family involvement at inter-county level as well. Is there a bit of a, a silent competition going on between the lot here to see who can do the best? Yeah, I think Heather is winning that competition at the moment, but yeah. um, which is great to see. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's, it's, it's an interesting side of it, and it's nice. Like, you know, it's kind of funny in training games from time to time when I find myself Mark and Connor. Um, I guess you kind of have to leave the whole family thing at home. But um, no, it's definitely nice off the back of you know some success that you know everybody can share with us, the family. So um, it's nice to have it, even just for I guess support as well. You know, like you can always bounce ideas from I guess a family perspective in that setup off different guys. So 
it's always good to get that uh, that family perspective. Yeah, and like you really started to nail your place down in the last year. So what what age you now, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, twenty six. Twenty six. So you probably came on the scene a small bit later. So you know, in often cases, players are established a little bit sooner. Do you think it was that run in uh, twenty twenty when you got to the All Ireland semi final and you you played very? I would say you were the pick of the the Thomas's players against Boris Lee in the All Ireland semi final uh, that day. Do you think that sort of run you had that uh, gave you the springboard to to get into the county team? Uh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, it does certainly help your confidence and um, that specific performance, but. You know, there was a lot of work that kind of fed into that as well. So I guess it's just seeing the benefits of doing that work. I guess it's just a matter of continuing that now and making sure that I'm even raising my own standards as time goes on as well. So just hoping to keep building on that. Yeah, and um, just in terms of like, you know, watching Connor play there for a few years, considering how it went in 2012, like he'd, he came on in the All-Ireland Final and, and brought back out again. Like he's, he's made some career and obviously recovered very well from that because that would have been tough for a very young player. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it shows his character, I guess, you know, like that you can't dwell on any one specific event. There's a lot of ups and downs with sports and you just have to show character and keep building on it and keep learning from it and ultimately um, just keep moving forward. So no, in fairness to Conor, you know, again, he's got himself in great shape. He's been building every year. Um, so hopefully you um, can see more of it now as the 2021 20, championship comes. Mm, and I presume you don't feel like you're too too far away at all. I mean, last year, I mean, you could make a fair case that you, you uh, might have left that Leinster final behind you. My, my words, uh, not yours. And then the all earned semi-final, you only lost by three points to a Limerick team that were battering pretty much everybody. So you, you're, you're very close at this moment in time, I would say. Yeah, I mean, like the hurling can hurling championship is very competitive across the board um like that a couple of breaks can be the difference in any given day so you know focusing on ourselves you know we do have a very strong team with a lot of great players there um but like that i think it's being aware of the competition you know like there's a lot of very good teams there so definitely would like to think that we're close but still um still building as we go mm. sarah just from your point of view what was the difference between last year and the year before when you won the All Ireland? Why do you think it didn't quite happen and Kilkenny got over the line? Um, I'd say probably your workout. You know, in two thousand nineteen, we really tried to emphasise our workout. You know, we tried to the semi final against Cork and the final. You know, we really tried to try to go and win every ball that we could. And then I don't know if that was there in the second half of the 2020 final and Kilkenny then outworked us and you know you gotta it doesn't matter really how talented you are you know if you don't work you mightn't get over the line mm. and then like has it, how difficult have you find the kind of the stop start nature of the last year and a half with with the pandemic and trying to you know go through your own training then back with the team then another long block where you're not training and back in again have you found that difficult um yeah you know it has been hard you know trying trying to motivate yourself to train by yourself and then you go back into the county setup and like and that's a completely different environment you know it's you have people there which yeah uh, you you're just having the crack you know with your teammates and then going back to training by yourself but i suppose you know every team had to do that so we just had to adapt and just try to get what we did by ourselves you know and bring it forward to when we actually got back onto the pitch and just uh in terms of the littlewood campaign and trying to you know with the amount of streaming going on and boost the the profile of Komogi, do you feel that that is changing that things are moving in the right direction oh definitely you know the fact that littlewoods have been a sponsor for five years now i think really shows that they care and they're dedicated to Camogie and the players and just trying to promote it and bring Camogie forward, which I think, you know, is only going to better it, you know, with all the live streaming of the league matches they do, you know, it's going to get people out there and watching games. And then hopefully, you know, if they watch one, they might come back and watch another and then it's all going to build from there. Do you, do you feel that some of the rule changes in the last uh, year or two have, have helped the game? Like, for example, you know, dropping the hurley and allowing a bit more physicality? Oh, definitely. You know, 
we've been doing strength and condition for years, you know, twice a week, every week. And all girls just want to show is that they're well able to get stuck in and get physical. So I think the rule change, you know, really helped show that and makes like it makes more game more enjoyable game to watch. And do you feel that um, the developments that have happened or the, the change in maybe tactics and stuff like that that have happened in the men's game, you know, a lot of carrying the ball out, running off the shoulders, is, is it moving that way in Camogie too, do you feel, or is it is it slightly different? Um, no, yeah, I'd say it would be, you know, as a goalie, I don't like the best, you know, you try work the ball out, you try find the person in the better position. You don't want to just lamp it down because it's not really giving the forward that advantage. So, yeah, I'd say it, I'd say it would be, yeah. Yeah, and and in in Thomas's is the is the women's game supported as much as the men? Is is there a big buy in? I know where I'm from in Boris Lee that there would be a big buy in for the women, especially the last number of years. Oh yeah, you know, like we would have championship matches too, and you'd see the crowd coming in, you'd see the hurlers coming in. You know, it were a very small club in Thomas's, so like it's I'd say it's only a few hundred people, so we really just try to get out and support everybody mm. and uh it, shane is heather able to keep up when you're having a few pucks out the backyard <laughs> yeah she she puts us to shame at times she's not afraid to throw the stick in but um uh, yeah i no, like that it's you know it's great to see i guess the camogie getting equal promotion like that you see how much time the girls commit like it's equivalent to what the guys commit so it's great to have the likes of little woods again um i guess like showcasing that and providing the support across the board and as a as a guy who plays centre back for the club, I presume you'd love every puck out lamped, you know, fifty fifty straight down on top of you. What do you make of how Hurling is evolving in the last couple of years? I know you're you're playing more in the full back line um, for the mm. county, but what do you make of the change? Uh, yeah, it's good to see. Like, I mean, in every sport, it's going to evolve as the years uh, go on. Like, you are seeing higher scoring across the board, which is definitely better from an entertainment perspective um, and better for the spectators to watch. So, I mean, there is a lot more ball being played around the middle of the park and then being delivered into the full forward line and kind of dependent on the space that's in there. Um, now the team kind of eradicates that. So it's, it's, it's tougher for the backs, you could say, but like that, I think backs are going to learn a lot and you will continue to see the game evolve um, as the years go on. But having played in the full back line in the last year or two myself, albeit at a club level, sometimes when the opposition try and drag out the half back line and you're in the full back line and there's nothing but 60 yards in front of you and a good lad on, like it's a very scary place at time, especially if uh, a good ball comes in. A hundred percent, yeah. And I mean, that's kind of where it comes down to communicating with your team to make it sure they're doing the right things up front uh, to try and, I guess, minimise that space as much as possible. So, like that, um, you know, it just comes down to the team playing together as a team and not leaving any single play single player isolated at any time. Hmm. Where, where were you for the 2017 All-Ireland? The 2017 All-Ireland? I wasn't part of the panel at that stage. Hmm. Uh, 2018 was I joined the panel. So, I mean, were you watching it? Uh, I presume you were in Crow Park that day. I was in Crow Park with the family, yeah. Yeah, and I like. Would you have had aspirations of still breaking in at that point? Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, look, I have kind of been building up to that point. Missed out in twenty seventeen, but you know, it was still great to experience that as part of the county. Um, was lucky to be brought in in twenty eighteen then, and looked like that every year. I just have to keep building and building and keep uh, adding value to the team. So, um, I'd like to think that I've been doing that. And uh, unless there's other siblings I don't know about, you, you're the odd one out at the moment looking to get that All-Ireland title, am I right? Uh, that's the one. Well, we have a club one from 2013. There's myself, myself, Donna, Connor. We won the, the club All-Ireland back in 2013. So we'll, we'll claim that one. Yeah, yeah. And um, who would be the most skillful player in Galway training? I have a feeling I know what the answer is, but uh, I'd be curious to know all the same. The most skillful player. Oh, there's, there's a lot of guys there. Uh, I thought this uh, was going to be a no-brainer for Joe Kenny. Oh, there's a lot of skillful guys there. I mean, Joe is phenomenally skillful, and he's definitely up there. Um, I mean, there's some other talented players there, Carl Mannion. Um, so it's hard to pick one now, but I'd say Joe and Carl are up there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Sarah, same question to you. Who'd be the tastiest? Oh, just as a lot of them as well. Probably, oh, if I had to throw out a name, 
maybe Aoife or Donna, maybe, you know, her wrists and everything. She'll probably thank me for that one later, but I'll, I'll give it to her, so. Yeah, she has a bit of speed to go with it too, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, well, well, look, thanks very much to both Shane and Sarah. Really appreciate that. And uh, best of luck with the season ahead. Thank Perfect. you. Thank you.